And uh, as Peter knows, uh, one of the key, uh, or at least a key player in uh, the discussions to take place between Speaker John Boehner and his House Republicans is Texas Congressman Kevin Brady. He is with us now to give the latest state of play from the Republican side. He's a member of the GOP whip team and chairman of the Joint Economic Committee. Uh, Congressman, good to see you this morning and thank you for joining us here on thank Market you. Makers. The, most, the single most important question, as you well know, is whether... Uh, Speaker Boehner will bring a Senate bill to the floor of the House for an up or down vote, including Democrats. Will it happen? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we think uh, America needs to pay its debts on time and, uh, and in full. We think it's time to reopen this government. We'd like to do it the right way in a way that forces both parties to actually start resolving some of these issues. Senate agreement may not be between Republicans and Democrats, might not be what, in fact, it isn't what we would prefer, but I think with the time where it is, it's important to move this. Uh, Congressman, I think it's extremely important for people to understand exactly what, will, what the chain of events will be. So would you mind spelling it out? Let's say Senate Democrats and Republicans come to an agreement and actually agree, uh, you know, uh, agree on the language of a bill that would reopen the government and, and put off the debt ceiling until at least early next year. What happens then? Well, uh, in the immediate, uh, in these hours and days, really in the Senate, because it is a Senate agreement, you know, they face some hurdles on time. So uh, unless all senators agree unanimously that this can move forward, it could easily be, be delayed a number of days, perhaps in the weekend. I'm hopeful that doesn't happen. The House obviously can move very quickly. But, but let me make one key point. Um, the, the length of time for both funding the government and the debt ceiling isn't as important as the direction it takes us. Does this agreement so move us in, into a process where we solve the bigger issues so we're not fighting this over and over again. The Budget Committee, I think, can resolve two and, big and issues. One, what the design of the sequester and, and how we fund the government in its priorities. And what is going to get us there when you talk about direction? If we do make an agreement, aren't we going to be back right here in three months? So what specifically do we need to do to get in the direction you speak of? You know, I... Hard to predict, uh, Stephanie, but I would uh, predict today that uh, the Budget Committee will work out the issues of the sequester uh, and the discussion about how we fund the government, not through CRs, which basically funds the government the way it was four years ago. What are our priorities now? I see the Budget Committee working that out. On the debt ceiling, I'm a lot less optimistic. I think we're going to be back where we are because the president does not really want to get serious about how we extend the life of Social Security and Medicare. House Republicans are vitally interested in that. And, I, and my worry is that if he stays the course, just I'm not going to negotiate, these issues are off the table without higher taxes. I, that's what I worry that we'll be back here in three months. I don't think that's healthy. Congressman Brady, my colleague, Chief Washington Correspondent, Peter Cook is also in Washington, and I'd like to bring him into the conversation. Peter? Uh, Chairman Brady, I, I want to make sure I understood correctly what you said at the, at the top, because it's obviously very newsworthy that you uh, believe that the John Boehner will bring this bill to the floor. Have you actually heard that from the Speaker? Has that decision been made? And just as significantly in terms of timing, will the House vote on the Senate bill first, if for no other reason than to expedite this process? Yeah, I haven't talked to the Speaker this morning. He's made it clear to the House that if agreement is reached in the Senate, it is coming to the vote in a very timely way. I don't know that the decision has been made that the House would lead on a Senate Republican uh, and Democrat agreement. Congressman, what is going to be the reaction from the Tea Party faction of the Republican Party if this does go through? You know, I would imagine uh, they don't like it or support it. Uh, clearly, changes to the Affordable Care Act was a high priority going into this. Even as late as yesterday, we were hoping to really end some of the special treatment lawmakers in the White House get in this, as well as repeal some of the taxes within that bill. We couldn't unite uh, on, that, uh, on those issues. So if you don't get 218 in the House, frankly, you take, unfortunately, whatever the Senate gives you. Does that mean they could, in fact, challenge Boehner's speakership? Well, you know, that's almost an entirely different issue from this. Let, let's focus on how we meet this debt ceiling deadline 
how we handle reopening the government, how we solve the bigger issues. But, but it is a big issue if, in fact, it goes through. And as you said, the Tea Party wouldn't be happy. How would they react? Well, it is difficult to say. What I do know is House Republicans are learning a lesson that without 218 votes, we have very little say in the way this government is run. And unless we unite behind what we believe in, which is a smaller government fixing the entitlements and tax reform, we're going to find ourselves in this position way too often. Uh, Congressman, I was left a little bit confused yeah. by what you just said to my colleague Peter Cook. So if you don't mind, I'd just like to rewind for one second and, and, and make sure that I understand uh, what you're saying and also that you speak for the Republican caucus in the House. That if the Senate passes a bill, Speaker Boehner will bring it to the floor and put it to a full vote of the House such that Nancy Pelosi, if she's to believe, can deliver 200 Democratic votes and however many Republicans want to, will be able to vote according to their own conscience. Do you think, A, is that the case? And B, if that is the case, will the bill pass the House? First, I'm not the Speaker. I don't represent the whole Republican caucus. But two, I believe that that is what will happen, that the Speaker will bring that agreement to the House floor you know, in a very timely manner. We think it's important uh, to meet, the, meet those debt ceiling uh, deadlines as well as reopen the government uh, itself. Uh, P Peter and, Cook and, is going to come back in. And, and, and Mr. Chairman, just want to make sure, and you're confident it, it will pass, uh, that, that, that vote will pass in the House? You know, I believe it will, yes, sir. Uh, Congressman, uh, do you have any support, idea? Sorry, go ahead, Peter. Peter, keep going. I, I just wanted to pick up on what Stephanie said, uh, Congressman. These are tough questions right now when we're not even resolved with these issues. Are you confident that John Boehner's grasp of the gavel is strong enough that he can survive any challenge come next year, if not sooner? And does he have your support? You know, he has my support. Um, it's hard to predict the future. Uh, what I know within our conference is this isn't just issues of leadership. It is of followership as well. Uh, this party is not uniting behind our core issues. As a result, I think uh, we are all um, frustrated with our inability to impact uh, this overall agreement. But again, that's what happens when you don't unite. Uh, I hope this is a lesson we learn. Congressman, how many of your colleagues are frustrated? Let's say a bill does come to the House floor, and we certainly hope it does. How many Republicans are going to support it? You know, I wouldn't speculate on that. Honestly, uh, I think it'll be, as always, a vote of conscience, and as well as understanding the immediacy of the issue. Uh, I simply wouldn't want to guess. Well, it's, you know, you understand why I'm asking the question. You're a member of the whip team. It's your job to help Kevin McCarthy count heads. Uh, is it going to be a firm majority or is it going to reflect a deep divide among uh, House Republicans? Well, I, I don't think there's any doubt that, uh, you know, we have so many independent uh, ideas and voices within the Republican Party. We're struggling to come together on these issues. So my guess is that'll be reflected in the House vote. What, what I do know is that we are going to head into this budget conference with the goal of redesigning the sequester uh, and, and finally funding the government with today's priorities. We also think for the debt ceiling, common sense changes in the future. We got to get control and sustainability of Social Security and Medicare. We think the time is right for tax reform. That's what unites us, and that's where we're going to be headed. Congressman, we thank you very much for spending time with us this morning here on Market Makers. You uh, gave some very important answers to important questions, and we certainly hope that things pan out the way you see it. Congressman um, Brady from Texas, and also our Chief Washington Correspondent, Peter Cook. Uh, meantime,